primary cause of dyslexia number five. In the last video, we mainly dealt with palindromes. I want to briefly show you another Leonardo da Vinci sketch. This shows a machine to grind down uh, a lens or a mirror. It's not commonly known, but you can project an image onto a canvas or a wall using a mirror. Uh, if you Google David Hockney um, mirror imaging or camera obscurers, you'll get the necessary information. Now, there's some people that that wonder whether Leonardo da Vinci had the equipment to do the experiments that I'm showing. I'm just using an ordinary glass jar. He would have quite easily been able to get hold of such glass spheres from glass blowing. This is a Chinese character. To explain what a palindrome is, as you can see from it, on an XY axis, uh, straight down the middle, it can fold on itself and it is a mirror image of itself. There are a lot of Chinese and Japanese characters that are able to do that. To explain this further, uh, I want to briefly uh, mention about the first emperor of China, uh, Chai. He was born in uh, 259 BC, died in 210 BC, and became emperor of China in 221 BC. He was a cruel ruler and he banished people that opposed him or his ideas. He is notorious for burning virtually all the books that remained from previous re regimes um, and even banned scholarly discussions to, to the detriment really of the Chinese language. Now in the previous video we showed these palindromic, these are Japanese characters. There are a great deal of these characters. Now Chinese is one of the oldest languages dating back to 1500 BC. Japanese didn't really come into its own until uh, the 4th century AD and which was taken from Chinese. Uh, characters and they adapted them so Japanese really is, is is secondary to Chinese in these characters here which are Japanese I'm just showing you how by adding lines they change an initial character but it still remains palindromic and there seems to be this necessity to create palindromic characters rather than a single character as we have in the West, in the Roman alphabet. And as you can see from a box section, they just add lines, add more lines, and create a different character. In this particular character, if you split it left to right, you end up what looks like a P and a mirror image of a P. Now, there's no reason whatsoever why the Chinese should not have just used half the character if it wasn't for the fact that it if it was scanned in one direction it would invert if it was scanned in the opposite direction now this is a Roman P to make a Roman P palindromic you would end up with a character like that with the two P's together joined together this character is a Greek phi as it is joined now I will show you using Leonardo da Vinci's test exactly what happens when you project these characters onto the wall. As you can see, the phi is inverted and the, when, when it's split, one looks like a B and the other one looks like a D. And this is the reason why dyslexics confuse Bs and Ds. Although this image would be sent through the optic chiasma and would be would be reinverted as a P and a mirror image of a P. But if, a, if there was a D on the wall, it would be shown, it could be confused for a B. Again, 
when you look at the Chinese character in comparison you can see that when the character is brought together it stays symmetrical and it is sent to memory as it is because it is palindromic and it can be scanned in either direction. This clearly shows why dyslexic readers mispronounce B's and D's and uh, mispronounce other uh, words in the Roman English alphabet. Again, here we have some Japanese text. Now, dyslexia is becoming more widespread in Japan and the reason for this is the Japanese are moving away from a vertical text structure and they're going to horizontal left to right and once they do that you're creating a scanning preference so a person that is unable to scan from left to right readily will then become dyslexic because they will have the same problem as we have with Roman text in this country. This is Hebrew. Hebrew is scanned from right to left and as you can see it comes, comes down the page. This is Arabic. This is also scanned from right to left. Now for Hebrew and Arabic language speakers text is read from right to left though the majority of other languages text is read in a left to right orientation clearly highlighting that orientation in reading is not only in one direction but varies between race and language. As this is the case it is obvious that not all people fit into the same box and consequently direction of a given language is taught with disregard to preference. The dyslexic automatic reflex of right to left scanning cannot be altered and must be accommodated to provide the, by providing the appropriate direction of text. Uh, please keep watching uh, as these videos together will all come join up and uh, confirm Leonardo da Vinci's discovery of the 15th century. Thank you for watching.